Good morning everyone, uh, Ricardo here speaking. We will be starting our webinar in two minutes. Good morning. Uh, here is Ricardo and David De La Rosa from Talit. Uh, I am a global VP for Talit. I'm in charge of our factory solutions business, and it's a pleasure to be talking to you today and showing some examples of uh, how we are uh, disrupting the way that companies are manufacturing. And the idea for this uh, webinar is to show some of the latest features of DeviceWise and uh, we will explore in details how we can connect basically any robot, any CNC, any PLC, basically any type of uh, industrial equipment into Microsoft Azure. So a very quick overview in terms of who Telit is. Telit's a global company. We are traded in London Stock Exchange. We have more than 7,000 customers around the world using our technology to make products better uh, we have all sorts of uh, quality uh, certifications such as ISO 16000, ISO 27000, ISO 9000. The company is basically a half a billion dollar company in revenue with more than 1000 employees spread all around the world. The technology that we will be demonstrating here had its origin in the year 2000 inside IBM Industrial Automation Group. In 2013, Telit acquired ILS technology, one spin-off of IBM, where we, when we bring SecureWise and DeviceWise to industrial IoT platforms into Telit products portfolio. DeviceWise is becoming a real standard in the industry, even though DeviceWise is present in many different verticals, from oil and gas, food and beverage, process and discrete manufacturing, the presence of DeviceWise on automotive market shows the importance of this industrial IoT platform for the industry. Today we have seven out of the ten biggest car makers in the world using DeviceWise. I really like this statement from Paul Krugman because this really guides the way that we develop our technology. Productivity isn't everything, but in the long run it is almost everything. At the end of the day, IoT exists only for one thing. Above the hype, it exists for you to make money by creating new disruptive products, for you to save money by making products faster, better, more reliable, and cheaper. And for you to stay out of jail, for you to stay compliant in terms of the regulations of your industry, given your ability to really control in real time 
what is happening on your industry to do serialization, traceability, and much more. Uh, checking out this uh, McKinsey study, it is very clear that all the economic impact of IoT will be mainly driven by industrial solutions, where operations and optimization and predictive maintenance has the ability of bringing potential gains for customers of a cost reduction between 5 and 40%. DeviceWise is the best product for you to go through this journey, bringing the reality of th Industry 3.0 to Industry 4.0. So basically what DeviceWise is, DeviceWise is a software, is an industrial IoT platform that has the ability to convert every single machine that you have from the latest one to the oldest one into a data point and giving you the ability to intercommunicate this machine with other machines and all the different systems that you have, making a bridge between IT and OT. With DeviceWise, you can bring data basically from everywhere, from the lowest level, such as actuators, sensors, and external instrumentation, to controllers, such as PLCs, CNCs, robots, DCS, torque tools, and much more and integrate this data on a completely bi-directional way to all types of softwares that exist on your IT, such as SCADA systems, MES, ERP, and cloud solutions. Everything on the PowerPoint looks very simple, but when you go to real life, collecting data from different machines might be extremely complex and challenging given the number of different controllers, brands, uh, protocols that you have on the shop floor. When you go to IT, life is not even simpler in IT. You still have different types of databases, different types of softwares, all running in parallel. But up to now, the challenge of uh, connecting all your machines, adding a layer of logic, and pushing this data to IT systems and from your IT systems to your machines involved hundreds or more uh, hours for you to have custom code pushing all this data together. The idea of DeviceWise is to create a completely transparent layer that give you the ability of connecting basically any machine to any IT system. The way that we do this is through uh, our software. Our software has three main pillars. This is a very important slide for you to understand what is the concept of device-wise. On the lower end, you have the device access layer. On your device access layer, you have hundreds of drivers for you to simply click and connect anything. Normally, for you to connect any machine is as simple as just deciding what is the driver that you're using, just appointing what is the IP address, and on a click of a button, you have all the tag trees, all the data available for you to read and write. You can also create logic and completely automate this process, this data logistics. Uh, the way you do this is with a fourth generation code method where you don't need to write one single line of code. It's just a matter for you to set up and you can drag and drop blocks of logic and basically push the data from any machine to any IT systems. On the enterprise access layer is where you decide to what type of IT system your data is going to. So for you to communicate, for example, to SAP, you just define what is uh, the connector that you're using and you can start integrating your machines into SAP. So you can, for example, open and close tickets. You can transport data for costing from your machines directly to your ERP systems. You can do preventive maintenance and predictive maintenance. And given the evolution of the, the, the data analytics clouds that exist out there, clouds such as Microsoft Azure, IBM Watson, Google Cloud Platform, AWS, Mindsphere, you also have all the connectors straight from device-wise to basically bring data from any machine to your cloud computer. So if you are using, for example, Power BI in uh, Microsoft Azure, you can bring the data from all the machines just by uh, clicking one or two buttons. 
The idea of device wise is really to bring more efficiency to uh, engineering scene. With device wise, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Instead of allocating a lot of time for you to create custom code for data collection and IT integration, with device wise, you have all this done on the state of the art. So your team can be much more efficient and deliver many more projects than you could if you decide to custom code everything. Even though DeviceWise talks all the major open protocols such as OPC, MT Connect, Modbus and more, DeviceWise has also the ability to natively talk to all the controllers. So when we are talking to a Rocco PLC, we are not using OPC, even though we could, we are using the Rocco driver. When we are talking to a Fanuc uh, robot, we are using the specific driver for Fanuc. This gives us much more efficiency in terms of this data collection. DeviceWise not only has the ability of collecting the data, but you also can create simple and very complex projects to completely automate this data collection, as I'm gonna give a couple of examples here. All the data that we transport is in real time. It's the fastest way for you to collect any data from any machine. It is the lowest latency in the market. We have all the security allocated on device-wise, so you can make sure that your IoT project is properly secured. Here is just one example of uh, how low latency device-wise is. In certain industries, the latency can completely kill the productivity of a, uh, of a production line. So device-wise has a ultra low latency, bringing the best uh, for your IoT project. So basically, uh, device-wise is not only a software, it's not an application, it's a real IoT platform. Being a real IoT platform, you can basically collect data from any type of machine. So as you can see here in this very simple diagram, device-wise is a transparent layer that has the ability to bring data from PLCs, robots, sensors, such as RFID, barcodes, and anything else, CNCs, torque tools, and even the people that are working on the line. And all this data can be communicated on a bi-directional way on databases, IT systems, HMIs, and cloud solutions. So what can you do with this? You can do all the, the automation products that you need. You can integrate and automate any machine. So for example, if you have one, uh, one machine in a production line and your first machine is controlled by a Rocco controller, and your second machine is a Mitsubishi controller, and your third machine is a Siemens CNC, you can basically make this Rocco controller to talk to your Mitsubishi controller and talk to the CNC controller all in a completely automated way. You can make integrations between preventive and predictive maintenance. So for example, you can go for the simplest example where if you want to set up a preventive maintenance by simply reading what is the manual of that machine, and let's assume that that machine uh, demands you to recalibrate every 1,000 cycles, you can just drag and drop one block of logic and say, device-wise, please count how many cycles did I uh, pass through, and after 1,000, send one email to my, uh, to my uh, maintenance manager open one ticket in SAP PM or Oracle EBS, for example, and even create one report showing me what is the machine that needs to be calibrated this week. For this effort, you will probably need less than one hour to have all this integrated. You also can do more complex type of predictive maintenance by collecting the data from all your machines, integrating to platforms such as Azure or Watson or any other sort of uh, program that will give you predictive analytics and push the data up and down from these cloud computers to your machines. You can have an online control, quality control. So you can connect your machines to your quality systems. I have a very interesting example here where we helped one customer in uh, the medical space to automate one CNC that was uh, working completely standalone. When we installed device-wise in, uh, in this facility, 
we integrated one robot to this CNC. So now the vice was, was letting the robot know when the part was ready, the robot was picking the part on the CNC and displaying this part on a quality control system that was a prober tool doing the measurements of uh, all the dimensions of this uh, controller. DeviceWise was also talking real time with this, uh, with this quality control system. So all the necessity of uh, offset on this uh, CNC was completely handled by DeviceWise. So not only DeviceWise integrated the robot with the CNC, but also with the control tool, writing back the offset on the CNC, making sure that you have a higher quality on your parts that are produced. You can have real time visualization. As we already showed in, in our previous webinars, you can use DeviceWise to have a complete visualization of your productivity, having OEE, for example, for every single machine, every single shift, every single operator, all your plant. You can have the complete integration between IT and OT. We can integrate to MES systems like Dassault Apriso. We can integrate to MES systems like uh, Cimatic IT from Siemens. We can integrate to SAP and we can integrate to Microsoft Azure, a very powerful cloud platform as we are going to show right after. You can have the complete artificial intelligence integration by pushing the data from all your IT systems and all your machines to the cloud, reading the data in the cloud and pushing the data back into the machines. So here just a very uh, quick use case that involves the necessity of the cloud. And uh, as we will be showing in this webinar, the focus on pushing the data from DeviceWise into Microsoft Azure. MC Machinery is a subsidiary of uh, Mitsubishi Corporation. It is one company that produces uh, laser cutting machines. They use DeviceWise and with DeviceWise, they can have a smarter machine. With DeviceWise, you can read all the data from this machine and integrate this machine in different types of uh, on-premise systems any type of database, any type of IT connector. You can also make this machine to talk to other machines on the shop floor. But when you have the integration with the cloud, you can have a device management. You can let the OEM to have remote access to these machines. So when it's necessary a troubleshooting, when it's necessary maintenance, maybe the engineer that might be in Japan doesn't need to fly to United States just to set up one machine. By using the cloud, we can use, we can open tunnels and let this engineer to remotely access this machine and work on this. Additionally, you can have a completely automated data collection, publishing the data into multi-platform data visualization. So customers can have the visualization of the performance of these machines on their hands, on their iPhones and on their uh, smartphones, and also to have dashboards showing how these machines are operating what is the efficiency? Doesn't matter where they are located. Device-wise, as I mentioned, can be installed 100% on-premises, but also uh, with a complete security layer, you can have this, uh, this plant to cloud connectivity. Well, that was uh, my introduction on the product. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, now I will transfer to David De La Rosa. He's gonna show uh, in real life, how you do this complete integration, we're going to open the product and uh, show you. Uh, if you have any questions, please type and at the end of uh, David's presentation, we're going to answer all your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ricardo. So uh, when I was asked to provide a presentation, um, I had assumed perhaps that uh, uh, some of you have some experience with DeviceWise, but just to cover all bases, I'm going to do a very quick uh, high-level overview of, of what we do and then uh, proceed uh, with a little bit more detail and a live, live demonstration of delivering some sensor data into Azure. So just to complement uh, what Ricardo uh, mentioned, DeviceWise is an integration tool that is le you could leverage to solve OT to IT uh, connectivity, fully bidirectional. The OT space can deliver data to IT, and I request data from IT to be placed on the OT space. 
Uh, the IT space is broken into two parts, the on-premises uh, IT systems, when customers deploy, de uh, deploy uh, their MESs like uh, SAP ME or homegrown MESs, and there is the cloud-based ones, uh, such as, of course, uh, hosted on Azure, Google Cloud, Siemens MindSphere, and our very own Teled IIoT platform. So there's two camps. So what I'm going to show you here is uh, basically what Ricardo mentioned. Um, we have the OT layer uh, specified here on the devices section. This is how you define uh, the, the, the sensors and the connectors uh, to OT devices. This is how you define uh, what PLCs you're going to talk to, what CNCs, what robots. Um, what uh, other kinds of uh, industry standard equipment uh, like Modbus, BACnet, SNMP, and so on. And um, the enterprise section is where you define how to talk to a particular uh, IT thing. Uh, so we have connectors to basically all relational databases, middleware systems like IBM, MQ Series, Microsoft, MSMQ, of course, uh, RESTful or HTTP web services, and natively, we also support SAP MII and SAP ECC, uh, which is the BAPI-based um, SAP. So basically, here we do the definition of the devices on the shop floor, generally speaking, and this is where you define the connectivity to the IT systems. Uh, in this case, mostly on-premise, but you could also define connectors to, for example, IBM uh, Watson. The project section is where you uh, develop the, um, the business logic or the edge logic. And this is where you say, um, I want to retrieve this information at this rate, uh, do some edge processing. Uh, if the data is below such a threshold, then don't do anything, otherwise do a transformation and then deliver it to the IT system, for example. So there is uh, quite a bit of custom uh, edge logic that you could do here without needing to know C Sharp or Java. And I'll show you in a little bit how we, how we render this, uh, this logic. It's basically a flowchart language and uh, you don't need a giant staff uh, to develop this kind of logic. Now on the Cloud IT connectors, if you notice, here we have a connector to our very own Teled IIoT platform uh, where you could develop some IoT applications where we do some level of device management, connectivity management. The next one is uh, Microsoft Azure. Uh, many customers use Azure uh, to deploy their business uh, applications. They have relational databases, visualization using Power BI, machine learning, and many other kind of services that Microsoft offers. We also have a connector to GCP or Google Cloud Platform, uh, particularly, or at this time, we have BigQuery. This is where you could deliver uh, all kinds of sensor data from your production floor into Google, and then all machine learning and artificial intelligence algorithms run and produces uh, a score for you to optimize or predict things in your in your factory floor and then of course we have a, a thingverse connector where you could interact with thingverse if you decide to you know deploy uh, such an iot platform so the net is uh, we are a, a very agnostic um, platform you could uh, you could talk to all kinds of devices so we're not tied to a particular vendor you could uh, interact with many kinds of IT systems and that uh, you don't need to deploy uh, you know, a large staff of programmers to realize the solution. It's all uh, point and click. DeviceWise also runs, of course runs in Windows, but it runs on uh, any kind of Linux, Linux 64-bit, 32-bit. It runs on very large uh, computers such as IBM P-Series. Uh, runs embedded in some PLCs and run embedded in some cellular gateways where you could deploy IIoT solutions. So it's a very comprehensive, a very flexible platform where you could deploy, uh, you know, your business uh, solution. <laughs> so, so that being said, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the features of Azure. Um, 
So we, um, in Azure, we support basically all the low-level protocols that you could use to talk to the Azure cloud. So we could talk AMQP, MQTT, and HTTP. Uh, this is um, in case uh, you have proxy situations in your enterprise, you may want to elect HTTP uh, or, or not. But uh, so you get to pick uh, basically any of the ways um, that Microsoft supports. AMQP is a very heavy protocol, very reliable. Uh, it has a, a kind of a big overhead, but it is very uh, robust. Um, MQTT is a lighter weight protocol um, that I would, I would consider using it even if you have like a cellular connection, for example, just because the data plans and HTTP is a very uh, firewall and, and friendly protocol. Um, we also support a feature called aggregation. Uh, it's also referred to as batching. And the reason is, is to conquer the, the latencies. Many shop floors want to deliver data, say, at a 100 millisecond rate, like presses <coughs> and temperatures and, and things. And because of latencies in the network, particularly going to the internet, uh, you cannot do it unless you do some kind of batching. So we support this concept of aggregation or batching, where you could uh, collect uh, uh, all kinds of samples in a unit of time and then deliver it to Azure. And you, you can send data at a 100 millisecond rate to Azure uh, with no issue. We also support uh, compression. So there are some IIoT applications like on ships, for example, that require satellite communications. So the compression, uh, just because satellite communications are rather expensive, the compression shrinks the payloads and then uh, you know, customers don't have to pay uh, this uh, huge amount uh, of money. Uh, there's a couple of another, other features here uh, worth mentioning. Um, stored and forward, we call it SNF. And SNF is a feature that uh, we developed that in the event of a network outage, uh, we will uh, record the data on a persisted uh, storage on wherever device wise is running. And when the connection is back up again, or the, you know, the transient network condition is, is gone, then all that data is delivery. So from a business point of view, you will not miss uh, key data uh, because of network outages, we take care of sort of buffering internally. Uh, you could specify many kinds of profiles in memory, in disk. You could select how much storage. Is it FIFO, LIFO? Uh, so it's very, very granular uh, 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 way to set up the uh, storm forward. And then, of course, security is it's a big deal uh, in uh, IIoT applications, of course. So we support full X509 certificate security. So the gateways are authenticated and the payloads are fully encrypted as they are in flight into the Microsoft uh, Azure. So per pretty, pretty comprehensive uh, support in the Azure. We also uh, can deliver IoT data or, te or telemetry data or just sensor data into an IoT hub and also to an event hub, depending on how the customer configures Azure, we have the flexibility to deliver data to either one of those two endpoints. In addition, uh, not only we can send data, but we could be the recipient of data sent from Azure into us. So later on, you'll see in our triggers that we could wait for a message to be sent to us to take appropriate action. So you have full uh, closed loop asynchronous uh, communications between the uh, edge or shop floor in this case, and Azure. Anybody, any site can initiate, uh, very rich. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, light up our Azure connector. And I'll, uh, I already put here the credentials uh, that you see here. Let me show you on the browser where you will get that. So this is the Azure um, um, portal, and then you go to the share policies, IoT hub owner, and you get this connection string here. So this is kind of the simplest, I'm not using certificates for the purpose of this demonstration. So you copy this, then you paste it into our workbench here, and now you are basically uh, connected 
uh, to the Azure system. In this case, it's an IoT hub. The, that's what you saw on the, uh, on the workbench and on the Azure portal. So our next step is to So our next step is to uh, do uh, a live, um, how do we define devices? So it's a little bit of a refresher to some, but if this is new, this is how we define devices in DeviceWise. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to a Rockwell Control Logic uh, Pro CPU. And um, for all of you familiar with um, shop floor equipment. Rockwell is probably the, the, the biggest uh, market share in the US. Uh, and what I'm going to do is provide a name. I'm going to call this Azure Live. Just give it a name. Live demo, if I could type. Um, I'm going to call it Logics. Just a name, and then we supply the IP address. It's on my network here. And throughout the product, you could kind of do a quick check. This is, it does an Ethernet IP connection to the PLC. So it's healthy. So we saved this definition, and then we started it. And then what it did is it went to the uh, Control Logic CPU and retrieved basically the entire data model. So here <coughs> you have all the control logics tags. You could read, you could write. Uh, mind you that I'm connected as a super user, so I could do reads and writes. But uh, we do support a role-based role, role -based security. So you could uh, create roles and groups for, with the proper permissions. And on a corporate uh, infrastructure, typically, uh, you can connect this role-based security and manage it through LDAP or Active Directory or ADFS. So it will conform to the corporate uh, security. But uh, this is just an example of how we define a device and you could read and you could write, for example. You could read some things and, and so on. It's very simple, just the IP address and away you go. So now I am also going to define a environmental sensor that happens to be in one of our labs. I'm going to call it e-sensor, sensor. Then you pick it from the list. It's this one here. And again, provide the IP address. Again, you could validate, make sure it's healthy. Yes, save it. And again, start it. And if you go to the variables now, you'll be able to see the temperature in the humidity and the illumination in that particular office. So 72 Fahrenheit, uh, uh, 129 lumens, and 46% uh, uh, humidity. So that's how easy it was to define devices. So you could do the same thing with torque tools, uh, CNC's, BACnet type systems. So you could uh, look into the data of your uh, facility uh, you could also connect via SMP to your laser printers and network equipment and <coughs> monitor the vital signs and take some remediation if needed. Uh, so very flexible uh, device drivers. And mind you, this is Windows, Linux, AIX, Raspberry Pi, and so on. So this is kind of uh, the, device, uh, the device part. So what I'm going to do next, now that we have devices, I'm going to show you how we get this data and deliver it to Microsoft Azure. So what we're going to do next is create what, something we call a project. Sorry, go over here. And we're going to call this project Azure Live Demo. OK, just a project. It's just a container. And then we're going to start that. And then we're going to create our first piece of edge or, or business logic. And we do that by. Uh, uh, defining what we call a trigger. So a trigger uh, has two parts. Uh, it has an event. When this event is true, this trigger will do uh, some steps or actions. Uh, just to show you how easy it is to, for example, if this event is true, uh, you fire an email. That's just a typical, that's the simplest kind of uh, 
preventive maintenance. If some fault is detected, send an email. But that clearly, that's not what we're going to do here. Uh, so let's uh, go and look at the events a little bit more. So let me name this trigger, send sensor data. So there's many kinds of events in DeviceWise. One kind of event is a time-based event. It could be every second, a periodic, for example, or it could be kind of a scheduler, every Saturday but not in December, for example. This is a time, <coughs> this is a type of a time-based uh, event. Uh, there's other very powerful events, uh, for example, when a PLC delivers data to you in the form of a transaction. So when the data comes, this trigger will fire, so you don't have to pull uh, the device uh, at all. It's just the, the, the device uh, at the edge knows when you need to have the data and sends you the data. Using this mechanism, you, you can scale very high. You could have one or two computers connected to 200 uh, Torque tools, for example, it can handle it, no problem. Another kind of trigger is a data-based uh, kind of trigger. So, for example, if this Boolean on this ro uh, control logics PLC changes, you do something. So, p very powerful and very rich and comprehensive event. Uh, for those that are looking very closely, you notice an event here, Azure. This is when Azure delivers a message to us then we will run. This is when Azure originates and then we'll wake up and then we'll take some steps, maybe turn off a compressor or, or take some remediation on the edge. So just for the sake of this illustration, I'm going to pick a scheduled trigger and instead of being a weekday, we're going to run it every, every second. Now, the logic, you could do simple data transmissions, but you could do some expressions, you could do some uh, early analytics or filtering and data reduction. Uh, so it's not a one-to-one, -one, but you could accumulate data on an embedded relational database that we support and then only send the data to the endpoint when it's absolutely necessary or when there is an outlier on, on the data. So just for the sake of a quick demonstration, you open this Azure uh, group and then you say send telemetry to the IoT hub. Let me, let me uh, center. So if you notice, the device wise uh, went inside, uh, uh, connected to Azure, of course, we're already connected, but more importantly, it went and asked all the possible endpoints available for us on that hub, either the event hub or the IoT hub and then you could pick him. So the key here is that you do not have to uh, type anything. If you notice throughout this uh, quick live demonstration here, I only had to type names and maybe IP addresses. There is no memory maps, there is no, none of that uh, needed here. So we did the introspection into, into Azure. So I'm picking this endpoint here, and what I'm going to do next is uh, select the kind of data that I'm going to, uh, to send. So let me make this wider. And then I'm going to copy this here. Let's just say temperature. And this is of type float for. Let me copy this. Uh, this is illumination. And temperature. Temperature, illumination. Recorded the telemetry data to be delivered to Azure later on. So very flexible logic. So what we're going to do here is hardwire this. And this is the simple trigger that uh, will um, uh, get that sensor data to Azure every, every second. So if it all goes well, you're going to notice here on the successes that now we have two successes. So now we have this uh, sensor data, which could come from a PLC, BACnet, Torque tool, CNC, is now being delivered to, to Azure. So now I'm going to show you very quickly how that data shows up in Azure. And for that, we get a console, a console prompt here, and then
waiting for Microsoft. Hello. Oops, what happened to the shell? Did I just kill it? It's possible. This shell doesn't want to work today. Let's see, bash, bash. Restart cloud shell, restart cloud shell. Just give it a moment. Hmm. Well, this is one. Uh, one Microsoft issue. So anyhow, sorry guys, uh, I don't know why this uh, shell is not starting, but um, let me try one more time. Oh, there you go, connecting to terminal. There you go, so now, uh, now we have our shell. So what I'm gonna look now is, um, there you go, so here, we will be able to see uh, the sensor data coming from, from device-wise. So every, every second you should see data, and now you have your sensor data showing up. So, of course, this is a console application, but normally what people do is they create routes and the data is then delivered to the endpoint, for example, Power BI, which is another hour in itself how to configure, but this is how simple uh, it is to get some sensor data into Azure. So that basically is what I wanted to show you today, uh, how this, how to configure device-wise to do this. Uh, it was very, very, you know, simple to, uh, to do. There is no programming whatsoever uh, involved here. Of course, you could claim that our visual logic is programming, but you don't need to have a, a computer science degree, just some common sense and have a problem in hand. So with that, I'll hand it over to, to Ricardo, and I think there is a Q&A section coming up. So thank you all. If any questions, <coughs> feel free to reach out to us, uh, Ricardo or myself, um, and we'll be happy to, to help. Uh, thanks, uh, Ricardo, thanks. Well, thank you so much, everyone. So if you have any questions, please feel free to type us here. So the first question that shows up here is, what cellular gateway uh, support device-wise. Basically, we have a very extensive list of uh, cellular gateways that are supported. You can go to help.devicewise.com and uh, find all this list there. But we have a Multitech, we have Dell, we have SysTech, and we have many other uh, gateways available. David, yeah. do you want to comment anything on that? No, no, you're right. So we, if you go to our website called uh, docs.devicewise.com and type in supported uh, gateways, uh, you will be able to see all the ones that we support. Some are cellular, some are hardwired, uh, but we support a, a good amount and we're always working on adding to our portfolio. Excellent. Uh, we have another question here that is, is the store and forward functionality available in Google Cloud Platform, ThingWorks, and so on? Uh, absolutely. Uh, so in Google Cloud, we not only support a store and forward, uh, but we also support aggregation because it's the same latency challenge and the same thing uh, uh, for ThingWorks uh, connector. We support all of those features. Yeah, and uh, store and forward is definitely a very important feature that we have not only when you were talking to cloud solutions, but also when you were talking to local on-premises databases or local on-premises uh, enterprise systems. And definitely store and forward is an intrinsic uh, solution that we have in device-wise. Our commitment is to make sure that you don't lose data because of latency or anything else because of network issues. So. Whatever happens to your machines when you are using DeviceWise, you can be sure that uh, DeviceWise will collect it and will treat it properly. So uh, I don't see any other question here on the chat. Uh, I invite you to go to this link, contact.telit.com slash 
device wise slash factory slash trial and you can request one free trial of device wise you can install this free trial in any type of computer it can be your laptop it can be a windows a